Good evening, Entropians. Julian McBain here, and we are doing more of the Merry Mayhem redo. I'm down to 11 hours and 44 minutes. I'm gonna operate this beast. And I only have 296 points, which is kind of disappointing. There we go. Camera was off. So. Definitely not doing quite as well in level 3 as I did level 2. I do think I'm doing a lot better skills-wise, which to me is very important, as you well know. But as far as loot goes, I mean, let's face it, Mayhem isn't great on loot anyway. I am getting more Shrap, which is important because it's offsetting the, the losses I'm taking, right? The ped losses, but overall I'd say that when it comes to the points, the competition itself, I'm not doing as good, which is fine because I'm more in it for the skills and the possible big loot, which if they come, they come, and if they don't, they don't, and that's life, right? You know, I don't count on them. They're just nice to get when you get them. So, but so far, so good at, at 11 hours and 43 minutes remaining, which means I'm about three and a half hours in. We've got 296 points, which is nothing terrible, and I've gotten some more M tokens, and I've gotten some more Fen tokens, which is, it was the Fen tokens that really drew me into this, because it, at the level 14s actually give up Fen tokens. The level 10s did too, but not nearly as many. I mean, I could go out to the, the field south of Boreas and kill the Dykeva there, and I'm sure I would get somewhere near the number of Fen tokens. But I really wanted to see what I could do inside Mayhem, and since I was getting other things like the Fen shirts and stuff like that, and this is a good level for me, I, I needed to see if I could actually sustain it. And so that's that's a good chunk of the reason that we're in here. And so far, so good. I mean, it's no different from doing it at level 10, except I'm killing things a little bit more slowly, which is to be expected. Um, repair bill is about the same. Armor's a little bit higher for obvious reasons, but and I am using my healing a little bit, whereas in the previous one I didn't have to. Almost made it, ugh, it did kind of make it unfair because I was just tanking it all in the armor. Um, the other reason that I really wanted to do this at this level is because when you're fighting at a level that's at your or slightly above where you might normally be hunting, you grind those evade skills out a lot faster. And I've got good evade, but honestly, if I could eventually, and I mean, we're talking, I know there are Ubers out there that can probably hunt at my level now and never get hit, or at least rarely get hit, and even then they've got enough health to not even care. But if I could go through a lot of gameplay where I can wear my, my quote-unquote street clothes as opposed to having to wear armor, I think it would be cool to just be out there in like a, a freaking jacket or something. Um, that is something I did. I, I finally did it. I, I put some money into clothes and I bought a coat. The uh, I think it's what is it a master co an elder coat, uncolored. Haven't decided if I'm going to color it yet or what color I might want it. But there it is. Don't judge me. There are other pieces of clothing that I will eventually gather and you know because everyone here that's that's the one thing about the Entropian clothing groups is that everyone here that I see they they've gotten something to kind of show off the type of person they are, and I, I've never took the time to do that, partly because I'm cheap, and the other part is because I didn't really find something that I was interested in. Like, I thought about doing the Torellian coat and stuff like that, but people want 20 US dollars for that jacket, it's, and I get it, it's a rare thing, but, or if it's crafted, it's hard to, you know, there's probably a lot of mats involved, but it's just, it's, it's high. And it's all for aesthetics. I wasn't ready to drop 200 pet on it, so I didn't. But this this was uh, 60 or 70 pet, I think. No, I think yeah, it, it was. It wasn't bad. So I said, you know what, the hell with it. I keep vacillating about it. I deserve to treat myself, so I bought myself a jacket. And you know, that's kind of what you have to do. It, it kind of goes along with that whole buy the damn coffee thing I mentioned in uh, my last Saturday vlog. If you're doing good and you've been failing to reward yourself, just reward yourself with something. It doesn't mean go compulsory, blow through all your money, but reward yourself with something. You've earned it. Damn. 
So, uh... That kind of leads into some of the things I've been thinking about uh, over the last couple of days. One thing that I've been thinking about is monetization, which of course I'm not eligible for yet on YouTube. Uh, I, Patreon, I'm not sure I really want to, one, commit to a Patreon, and two, that I've got some concerns about business practices, which I'm not going to get into, so I'm going to hold off on that whole idea. But I have considered setting up a website, kind of as like a combination blog discussion area. And I, I mean, I do other things too. You know, I, I, I published a novel, which is outside of its exclusion zone. It wasn't very successful, which, you know, to be fair, is... You know, okay, it wasn't successful. That happens to 90% of authors. But since I'm outside of the contract period and the publisher, um, who is Fantastic Journeys Publishing, they're a fantastic company. Um, but I had them pull it. So if I were to ever re-release it and not go through the publisher, I would probably serialize it on a website, and I've considered that. And I've got half a dozen other completed or almost complete manuscripts in that series that I would love to release, and I just haven't. So it's something that's on my mind. I'll think about it. I mean, there's a lot that goes into building a website. That's a huge time commitment, at least up front, you know, making sure it's up to date. Do I want to add another couple of hours a week to my, you know, my unpaid work schedule is what it comes down to. Let me know if you know if, if that would be something you'd be interested in reading uh reading my ramblings in a blog and the book that I actually wrote with my ex-wife um, and the other manuscripts that we had worked on and some that I worked on on my own then drop a comment let me know I would be interested to know um, I'm not unloading baggage here or anything I'm just curious as to whether or not you'd be interested in reading them because they've <laughs> The time period that I spent writing, and I've actually made a commitment to, to write more often. In fact, I've even started keeping a journal for the first time in years. Oh, dear God. Um, no, I will not subject you to that. But there's a certain freedom when you write that you don't get anywhere else. Because especially when you're doing raw writing, and what I mean by that is, anytime you write anything, essays, books, stories, poems, to be frank, the, f the first time you write it, the very first draft, you're going to get rid of 90% of it, except maybe the poetry part. I find that in a lot of cases, you um, most poems don't require a huge amount of editing, because it's, it's all about emotion and a lot less about um, logical process of thought. Which is not to say they don't have a logical progression, it's just that because you are, if you, especially if you're not following any sort of a limerick type or construction, it's really about expressing how you feel on paper, and I like that. But on, on other things like nonfiction fiction, expository essays, things of that nature, the first draft you write and this, this comes straight from, uh, it was my high school writing one teacher. And let me kind of lay this out. Writing one and two in my, in my high school was not part of the standard English curriculum. You had American lit and English lit, or not English lit, but um, yeah, no, we had English lit and all the standard Englishes, which included writing both expository and fictional, but writing was specifically about tightening your writing to a college level. And so the first writing course I took was actually expository writing, and then the second writing course I took, writing two, was creative writing. But I, the expository writing class, the first thing the teacher said right after he no shit threw a book across a grammar book across the room telling us how much he hated it and the reason he threw it across the room was to illustrate what it meant to between showing and telling and writing and i'm probably putting half of you to sleep right now but that's okay um 
the reason he threw it across the room was to express, you know, you can say, you can say that Mr. S was angry. And I'm not joking. He actually acted this out as he said it. Or you could say that Mr. S jumped on his desk and threw the book across the room. And it smacked against the wall and dropped into the recycling bin. And from, that's where that damn book belongs. Uh, I had a purpose for this. Oh. But he said that on your first draft, 90% of what you write is crap. You're going to throw it away. And you're going to take the 10% that was good and you're going to write it again. And then you're going to take the next 10% from the second draft that was good with the original 10% that was good. And you're going to take the other 80% and that's crap. And draft after draft, that's how you end up making a good essay and by extension good fictional novels. And I'm in the 10th draft of the first book, having already released it on the 7th. Or no, I released it on the 8th. Because after... After publishing it, after looking at it, I realized there were holes that I was uncomfortable with, which is why I pulled it from publication. But tightening it up again, I, I would love to see it out there again, even if it's not you know, making me money or anything like that. So that might happen. I might put that on the website. And then you can kind of see the way that my, my head works a little bit better. Because I know you're probably all just dying to find out the chaos that goes around in this batch of neurons. Uh, kind of segueing from that, things that go along in this batch of neurons, I was having a frankly political discussion. I'm not going to get into the politics part of it with a couple friends of mine. And we were kind of, we were having a debate, but it was a debate that would have been better circled around a roundtable discussion. And I've, I've been watching a lot of the Rubin Report. And they have different people on there talking about different things, and often it's politics. And I'm not going to go into, you know, what my belief in politics or anything like that is. I don't think that's really appropriate to the channel unless it directly affects content creation or video games or video gamers, because that's obviously topical and, and doesn't have anything to do with partisan bullshit. But um, – as I was thinking about it, because the three of us are so far apart, like one of them is probably two to three hours away, which isn't bad. That, that's, that's not a problem. But the other one's in North Dakota, and it's really hard to sit down and have a roundtable when one of the three of you is 2,000 miles away. And having tried to do Skype teleconferences and make them work, it never really works the way you want it to. I mean, you can do it at a computer, but without that physical representation, it's almost like you lose something. And so I was wondering, I got to thinking, and I'm like, you know, it would be really cool if, if the three of us had avatars and Entropia, and we were all sitting in an apartment in some really posh chairs. Because I've seen some really nice apartments in Entropia where they have these nice chairs and a table in the middle, and it's very homey, and it makes you feel like you're actually in a home. And if we had VR capability in Entropia, it would just be like freaking a Sword Art Online, and I've got more to go on that later. It would be freaking amazing. And I was just thinking, what if someone, me or someone else, and I, I, I'm not committing to doing anything at this point because I'm already putting a, a, a good percentage of hours into my channel right now, were to create like a talk show in Entropia Universe for, the pur for two purposes. One, for the purpose of using the Entropia platform for more than just hunting and mining and you know, crafting and the occasional PvP. But to show the the flexibility of the Entropia platform to be used as a virtual service. And I know MindArk doesn't pay attention to content creators, or at least I'm pretty sure they don't pay attention to content creators. Although the last time I said someone didn't pay attention to my channel, they commented for me not to, to say that they don't do it. Um, but things like... Uh, we could hold talk shows on the platform and you could do so with people that are across the world and they would have their their physical representations as the avatar in the game uh, they could dress themselves up because of course there's plenty of clothing and that would give tailors more of a market and you could do things like roundtable discussions interviews 
shit, someone could get never die to do an interview with them. Mr. President of the Virtual World, or I don't know how what his official title is, quote unquote, anymore, but you know, do interviews with tubers and um, even have like a, a I've, I've mentioned the whole Steve Irwin and Entropia idea where you could have someone who's exploring the various creatures of Entropia and kind of adding to the really adding to the flavor text or the flavor background uh, the lore, that's the word I'm looking for good grief, adding to the lore of Entropia universe just by participating in it you know I think that would be fantastic. I just I think that we haven't tested the limits of the platform. And the platform really doesn't have a huge limitation. The big limitations on the platform are frankly where the players bring it cuz Mindark for all the mistakes that Mindark makes and they do make quite a few. They are not a perfect company and you won't have a perfect company cuz it's staffed by humans. But one of the things they came up with for this is they came up with what could be the closest thing and I'm going to say it, but in the context of a game that was made in 2003, they gave us the ultimate video game sandbox MMO. The ultimate sandbox MMO is Entropia Universe. We just haven't used it to its full potential yet. Could it use with some upgrades and some adaptation? I'm not going to say no. I mean, shit, the game's 15 years old. An old girl has aged beautifully. The only game that comes close to aging as well as this is World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft has, well, let's put it this way. World of Warcraft has pretty much slain every other MMO out there for all intents and purposes. The only real contenders are other major franchises to a much more limited extent. And although Entropia Universe has a limited player base, especially in cons uh, compared to that Titan, because Mindark's mistakes have not been as grossly egregious as Blizzard's, because they largely leave the player base alone and don't fuck with the a good thing, it's been able to survive and even grow where other MMOs are kind of seeing a, a, a plateauing or a, a, a slow erosion of their player base. I mean, let's face it, World of Warcraft had 12 million players. I think it was 12 million players at one point, and now it's down to five. In Entropia Universe, our population has just crossed the million mark, and it's growing slowly but steady. And that's okay. It's okay to grow slowly. Better slow growth than to rock it up and then die. And for the love of God, at least no one's bitching about vanilla. Um, sorry. Sorry. And I say that WoW Classic is in beta, in public beta, and I haven't been playing it. But, and I've been waiting for it because of the challenge. Because the, the big reason is I love the idea that you had to grind your skills out. And this is before that, you know, I, I was into that whole idea before I met Entropia Universe. Which is probably why this has become, has become my favorite game, is because you can grind skills. You can grind individual skills, and it has a direct effect on how you play the game and how good you are at something in the game, as opposed to a level system, which level systems have their place, and I really like them for certain things, but sometimes it's just like, well, okay, and, and a, if, if Entropia was a, a, a true level system game, instead of having the profession levels that reflect your skills, you know, profession levels, you don't level up and suddenly you're you know, 10 points stronger, it's, okay, you made the certain skill, so your equivalent level is this in this profession. Um, the thing about levels in games is in a lot of games, it doesn't matter what you're, you're leveling in. I could put down a sword and pick up a gun, and I'm just as good with the gun as I am with the sword because I'm level 10. And here it doesn't work like that. It's much more like real life. If I spend hours and hours hitting mobs with swords, I'm going to have a really good sword skill. But if I pick up a rifle and I haven't been using the rifle, then I'm not going to hit shit. Which is, frankly, realistic. I mean, if let's face it, if I had a gripe about Entropia Platform on how the game is played, my only real gripe is, is the fact that there's no... 
like sword skills. And that's one thing that I think Blizzard has over Mind Arc is that they do have a complex combat system, whereas Mind Arcs is extremely simple. But at the same time, that has its place and it has its advantages. Because it means that, especially those of us who are content creators, you know, as I'm here grinding out, which is what is frankly one of the grindiest games in, in the world, if not the grindiest game in the world, as I'm grinding this shit out, I can play and pay just as much attention to what I'm saying as I am the game. And I'm going to continue building those skills. And I just I can watch the mobs around me. I don't have to... I'm not as intensely focused, which is both an advantage and a disadvantage. But I'm able to do things like this content creation and do like my blog posts where I'm, I'm kind of relaxed and chilling out and playing the game kind of low-key and talking. And I wouldn't necessarily be able to do that in like World of Warcraft, especially if you're fighting a boss. If you remember some of my old WoW videos, um, the newest of which I think is now more than a year old because my poor guild hasn't gotten together in a long time because life, you know. Until the, the dungeons became old hat, we were very, very cleanly focused on what we were doing. And once they became old hat and we were buzzing through them, it wasn't such a big deal, but um, you had to remain focused. And in this game, there aren't many places where that's really necessary because you don't have to worry about things like rotation. And so, you know, that expanding upon the uses for the Entropia platform kind of brings me to the final thing I really wanted to chat about tonight. And you can tell I've been watching Sword Art again because of this, but I really wanted to kind of explore it for a hot minute with you. And that's the line between the real world and the virtual world. And it's coming to my attention that this was more prophetic than anything. The line between the real world and the virtual world is thin at best. And yes, I am paraphrasing Kirito from Sword Art Online. Just hear me out for a minute. Something the internet has given us that we never had prior. You know, and I'm talking ever since the early chat rooms where you punched in a username, and I could say I'm a 34-year-old man from Vermont, and I am. Or I could say I'm an 18-year-old girl from California, and if I'm in the 18-year-old girl chat room, there's no one out there to say the otherwise. And that's a paraphrase from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Wow, I'm making a lot of obscure geek references tonight. Um, but... There is a certain amount of anonymity that the virtual world gives us. Which allows us to be who we really are. And I'm not talking when... You know, you've got the people who like to play space pirates and they like to play the bad guy. That's fine. That's a little bit different. And I've mentioned how, you know, the pirates have a nasty... You know, they, they, they go after people, they blow each other people up, and if they grab your shit because you're stupid enough to carry shit in the spaces, I have been in the past. Not gonna lie, I fucked up once or twice. Uh, once. I lost my two first two Fen tokens. Damn it. But... When dealing with folks, and I'm not talking playing the bad guy and PKing and taking their shit, but it's more like when you're dealing with folks on the ground, like the uh, the time when uh, a player was killing sweat targets just to get other players that were trying to do something other than what they were doing out of an area because they were being assholes. The person you are in the game really reflects upon who you are in real life, even if you don't show it. You can be an utter t dick in real life and hide it really well because your job requires it or because your parents require it or because your girlfriend or boyfriend require it, right? But that doesn't stop you from being a dick. It just means you're a well-controlled dick. And so thinking about it, what 
things like Entropia Universe, World of Warcraft, EVE Online, um, Elder Scrolls Online, which is a game I really, really kind of miss and should play more of, and I haven't played in w probably 12 months. Um, Fallout 76. And again, I'm not talking about the players who go out there deliberately to blow up other people's bases, although it's, it, it's kind of a dick thing to do. It, what it really comes down to is if, if you're out to play the bad guy, there's a place for it. And even those players have, a, again, a certain sense of honor, and there's a reason for it. And they do it so they build up the, you know, they build up their bounties and the, the good guy players kill them and take their money. And they're okay with that. And you know what? That's, to me, that's okay. There is a place for players like that, and they are a good part of that ecosystem. Just like pirates are a good part of the ecosystem in Entropia Universe. Because honestly, if, if like a play, if a, a bunch of players got together in a society formed what would essentially be a player-run corporation in this game, even though Mindark hasn't really set up the, the framework for a player-run corporation, which is kind of a shame. I think there's a lot of potential there. You can run a society like that, but it doesn't really work very well because there's no way to monitor it. But just for the sake of argument, you know, you could get a dozen players together or two dozen players together with a dozen quad wings and fly up as a squadron. And if a pirate attacks, 12 quad wings versus one or two is kind of a no-brainer. Especially when each one has a gunner and a second weapon. And there are pirates who want that to happen. Like, I have spoken to these guys. They're like, it would be awesome if, if they eliminated... Um, the ability to log out on top of transports because that would require there to be convoys and escorts and it would be much tougher to take out these ships because they would be guarded and so this is what they want they want these grand space battles that cost ridiculous amounts of ped but hey that's if that's their thing if that's how they want to spend their money more power to them you go guys The most dangerous thing to happen to you is to have a global in space, I'm telling you. Been there. I ran for the nearest uh, space, port or, um, space station and immediately unloaded all my shit. But the thing is, is just because they're playing the bad guy doesn't make them assholes. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, they could taunt you kind of like one, but they're, what they're doing is they're, they're playing out the role, right? Kind of like an actor. But when you know you kill Steel or... You know, you prevent a player from being able to, to play their game. Because even a pirate will only shoot you down once unless you go after them. Never, never have I been shot down twice on the same flight in the same place. So, like, I did have one time I was shot down in Arcadia, and then shot down at Calypso on the same flight. But it wasn't like I was shot down twice at Arcadia. They shoot you down once, they let you go. That's the way it works. Unless you piss them off because you fucked something up, like... And I don't mean shooting back, they're delighted usually when you shoot back. What I'm talking about is like, um... You know, you're out there trolling at them, or you're being a dick or something like that, and... I mean... I could, I, I've thought about trolling pirates because it'd be just like um, when the delusionist was trolling the oil, oil rigs, but I don't want them to hate me. And I do shoot back, and I lose because I haven't spent enough time in space, but uh, except that one time. That's kind of a pride point. I did manage to win once because I was completely focused on on point, and I, and I had a plan, and I executed it, and it actually happened. And I haven't done it since. <laughs> But, you know, to, to quote the Big Lebowski, be excellent to each other, you know? Because we're, in the end, whether you play bad guy or good guy, you know, whether you're a pirate or a miner or a hunter or a sweater, we're a community. That's what we are. We are a community. We're a community of players all having a shared experience. And if we can't be that community, if we can't help each other out and, and be kind to each other, we really aren't contributing to forming this virtual world as a beneficial place to be. 
and then those assholes who want to come in and overtake and show just how how bad video games are for 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 kids are, are going to be the ones who win out of that and no one else so that's i guess that's all i had to say that's that's me on my soapbox um tell me what you think about it I'd like to know, you know, ideas for what the way the Entropia platform can work. Things that, you know, you think about how people treat each other in game. I, I would love to know. Because that's really kind of what I live for, shit like that. So, alright. I've been rambling on long enough. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. Again, if you have any opinions on the matter, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I would love to know what you're thinking. Um, if you like what I say or you hate what I say, I would love to know why. You know, I, what the hell? No way. I have never seen this vehicle before. That is new. Well, it's not new, I'm sure, but it's new to me. Zombie Kong Monster Truck. Matthew Matt Graham. That's definitely not her. That's some interesting face paint, though. Huh. Pretty sure that's Cyrene based, judging by the. Oh, it might be Tulan based, judge by, judging by the um, sign, but. Check that shit out. That's awesome. So, anyway, once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. I really appreciate it. You all have. A fantastic night.